So as you can see our presentation here, thank you for introducing us. Just one small thing. I'm not from Australia, from Austria, which is sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Sorry. You can see here uh, on this map uh, our three countries. We have a research group from three different countries and we research um, on language competence and language development in translation and interpreting studies this is our main topic. And um, well, I've already introduced it. We all teach in uh, languages and translation in uh, TI degrees. And uh, we have found out that um, language, even though being one of the main ingredients, maybe the most important thing for translation and interpreting, is kind of uh, not being the main focus of this discipline. And so, as we are convinced that this is a very important point, we have um, created um, this acronym that, can you see, that, you, that you can see here, which is TILT, Translation and Interpreting Oriented Language Learning and Teaching, and this is what we are researching. Um, as I've already said, it's a topic that's under research within translation studies, maybe because it's in between two disciplines, translation studies and language teaching, two disciplines that have not really uh, had a very a fruitful collaboration over the years. And so we think uh, um, by visiting this topic, we can also uh, um, kind of build a bridge and come into our topic to translation, uh, to language teaching within translation interpreting degrees. With our position is that it should be different from general translations teaching because it needs to be targeted towards, towards what our students are going to do later with the language, which is using it for translation and interpreting. This is why it should be oriented towards those activities and it should be framed within LSP, which is languages for specific purposes. Um, as I already said, it's a very small field of inquiry between the, those to large disciplines, which is translation studies on the one hand and SLA or language teaching on the other. And interest in this, uh, in this field started in 1990s, predominantly in Spain, just to name, to mention two important names. I would say it's uh, Laura Berenguer and Justine Brenkritz, who wrote the two doctoral theses in the 1990s. And from then onwards, there has been increasing uh, interest and um, research papers. At the beginning, mostly experience-based papers, but uh, we have seen a surge of interest with more empirical research in the last decade. Until now, the main focus of research has been on outcomes, on competences, on what students should know when they start translation interpreting, and on what teachers can do and contribute in the classroom. Okay, as Astrid mentioned, we all have a translation studies background and we all teach future translators and interpreters. And in this vein, we try to identify the needs of our students uh, in terms of their language and linguistic competence. And um, our study was conducted in 2020 in our three countries in Austria, Slovenia and Spain. We devised an open-ended questionnaire and got responses by 117 students, BA and MA. Approximately one half of the responses came from Austria, 20% from Slovenia, 30% from Spain. And we analyzed, uh, analyzed them qualitatively and quantitatively as well. Uh, in particular, question number one, have the courses prepared you sufficiently to be able to translate later in translation courses? Uh, what we wanted to uh, identify is what contents, procedures, techniques, materials and references were most and least helpful to our students, budding translators, and we also wanted to elicit some suggestions for improving language training in translation and interpreting programs. Uh, so these are our findings, our summative findings pulled together for all three cohorts. And uh, the responses show that uh, some 26% of students think that they were prepared uh, for translation, 12% said that this, their answer was rather affirmative, some 30% 
were partly prepared, partially prepared, uh, while a further 15% were rather critical. And we also got some straightforward no's from 17% of the students. So, uh, according to individual countries, the responses were a bit different. Dif different. Uh, different. For instance, uh, the most critical students were in Spain and the least critical students in Slovenia. But the bottom line here is that they still are lacking some competences which are not provided to them in language classes that they need further down the line as future translators. So, as to the next slide. So, the findings of our thematic analysis. Um, these are the question, the answers to questions two, three, and four uh, revealed that there were five topics that needed special attention in language classes for future translation students. The first one seems to be straightforward. This is translation orientation and the, the classes need to cater for the specific linguistic needs of translators. This may be seem self-evident, but uh, to uh, to a great extent, it's still not there in linguistic classes, language classes for future translators and interpreters. So there are also some skills that need to be developed. Highlighted were text reception, production and analysis, and also oral production. Uh, in terms of content and topics, this should be current, varied, and again, translation oriented. They also would like to have more work with sources, be it guided dictionary research or research hints and other important research uh, uh, resources to be, uh, to be taught to them. And last but not least, I mentioned teacher attitudes, which should reflect the demands of the student's future professional workplaces. And uh, over to you, Enrique. Okay, thank you. Well, now, based on the results gathered in our study, we have come up with our own teaching framework, which you can see here. So, um, it is a holistic model made up of different interconnected elements. So at the center of it, uh, we can find professional language use, uh, which stems from the idea that language teaching in a translation program must be framed within an LSP approach. And the central element is flanked by three other elements on both sides and at the top, so language skills, teaching materials, and the thematic spectrum. In the upper part, we can find the contrastive perspective connected with um, skills, materials, and the thematic spectrum. And finally, in the lower part, we find a series of teacher and students aspects. Now, let me delve into each one of them a little bit. So, the next one. All right. So, the central element of our framework, professional language use, uh, should go beyond the mere development of communicative competence. So in this regard, reading comprehension should be fully enhanced. So, texts should be approached from a macro and micro textual viewpoint. So at, at, at a macro textual view level or a viewpoint, students should apply scheming strategies in order to determine the function of the text, the target audience, the communicative purpose, um, as well as the textual conventions of that textual technology and also the context. At a micro textual level, both um, vocabulary and grammatical structures should be given priority. So instruction should begin with more general texts with a progression towards semi-specialized texts and ultimately specialized texts. Regarding all the skills, listening comprehension, for instance, it should be worked on, um, it should be developed, uh, bearing in mind the overlapping of different cognitive efforts that take place when interpreting and also the development of strategies that allow students to automatize the cognitive processes that occur. A written comprehension should help develop the student's capacity to perform inverse translation or interpreting for which we propose to use um, a parallel texts so that students can become acquainted with the structure and linguistic means of that particular text typology and also a guided writing process that is a strategy intended to limit the free choice of linguistic resources when um, writing 
and avoid the use of uh, circumvention strategies. Um, speaking should pay heed to pronunciation, that is accuracy and language chunks, fluency to free up the cognitive burden that um, speaking a foreign language entails. Mm -hmm. Next one. In regard to materials, uh, authenticity should be um, foregrounded. So teaching materials should be um, a reflection of real life professional situations. As for the choice of materials to be included in a language course, a needs analysis is in order. So the decision should be made based on the context and uh, the types of texts that require a greater amount of translation. Next one. The next element, the thematic spectrum, brings to the fore the fact that current ESP branches are insufficient if the goal is foreign language teaching in a translation of program. They focus mainly on disciplines such as medicine, law, etc. Notwithstanding, the spectrum in translation studies needs to be broader. Our students are to deal with um, text genera from diverse disciplines. So ideally, Training should initially cover topics that are dealt with in their in the students' perspective translation and interpreting courses, and subsequently move on to other topics, especially those with a greater amount of translation. Next, the contrastive perspective is meant to enable students to find similarities and differences <clears throat> between the languages and manage their multilingual repertoire more consciously and effectively. So contrastive work can be done at the grammar sy uh, systemic level by comparing language forms and their associative functions and at a lexical level by analyzing equivalences and focusing on interference. In any case, contrastive work should be especially emphasized at the level of this course because students deal with texts rather than linguistic systems. Next one. Okay. And last but not least, um, we have teacher and student aspects. So teachers should be sensitive to the task of translation. They should have experience with translation, either academically or professionally. On the other hand, given the impossibility to cover all topics and the limited number of content hours in class, it is paramount that students become independent and extra learners and engage in forms of deliberate practice in order to become language experts and also remain language experts through lifelong learning. Okay, this brings us to the conclusion of our uh, presentation. We have uh, drawn a few conclusions from our study. And the first one, it has been confirmed that um, language teaching and language learning uh, needs definitely be different from um, general language teaching and learning. So general communicative methods are only of limited relevance for our field and that there's a definite need for targeted language development, targeted towards what students are going to do with the language in the future, in future courses and in the future professions. We have also identified a few research avenues that uh, could be explored in the future. And one of them is that there should be a stronger focus on interdisciplinarity uh, to neighboring disciplines that would uh, be very uh, important to inform um, TILT, which would be SLA and language teaching. And um, it would be interesting to um, explore uh, more the area of the area of learning and learning autonomy, because as I've said before, uh, up to now, this focus has been rather on teaching on what teachers can do in the classroom than on learning. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you very much um, for your um, attention and we're happy to, ask, to answer any questions that you might have.